Hi everybody, um, this is Ricardo Pretura Silva and um, this is my first video blog that I'm making. Um, the goal of this video blog is to discuss my July results and I plan on doing this a, a, monthly, a monthly thing where I show you my best results and my all the data that I go through to evaluate my month and um, I decided to do this uh, for a couple of reasons one of them is because I get asked I get asked a lot on my twitch stream about how, how I actually do um, divided in these little periods of times like in a week or in a month and so on and also I want to keep track of my results and my yeah, my results um, in my pace for the supernova that I'm going this year. So I'm going to start off showing you guys the final tables that I made um, this month. I made 20 final tables. Um, the best result was a fourth place. The biggest cash was a fourth place in the big 162 uh, on July 7th. Uh, I got two tournament wins. One of them was the 265 knockout on July 16th, worth 5,500 bucks, and uh, first place in the 55 rebuy, which was worth, um, where is it? Which which was worth 2,790 dollars. Um, those two tournaments are pretty tough, so I'm actually really proud of being able to win them. And as you can see, I final tabled the 265 knockout three times this month, and the 55 rebuy also three times, actually four times the 55 rebuy, finishing top three in three of them. So it shows that I'm actually being able to play against uh, the high stakes competition, and that's what I'm looking for. Um, I'm not only looking for going to Supernova and just breaking even. I'm actually looking to try to make some money on the way. And uh so yeah, those are the final tables you can see on the left of this of the screen. And now uh we're gonna talk about we're gonna talk about um a few of the a few of the data that I'm that I'm looking into right now. Starting with the caches, I cashed for forty eight thousand dollars this month, which is a lot. It's a good number for me. Um, my ROI was 3.7%, which is not not that big. It's pretty small actually, and uh, which results in a profit of $1,738 uh, without rake back. And uh, that's not the biggest profit ever, but um, I'm I gonna I'm gonna talk about this our low ROI number. For a second, ROI for those that don't know means re um, return on investment, and uh, the reason I think my ROI is that low this month is because I'm multi tabling a lot, and uh, that first of all increases the buy-ins, and second of all, it's gonna increase, um, it's gonna decrease my my game level. Um, for example, if I'm playing five tables, I can comf comfortably play my A game, A game, and even more tables. I'm just going to give you an, an example here. So when I'm constantly playing like 12 tables or so, my game level is going to drop consistently, and that's going to cause me to lose some money, um, probably reducing my hourly rate. But that's not counting rake back. Which is really important, and also making supernova not only not only counts the rec break back for this year, but also for the next year. So I think it's worth it. Um, it, it is totally totally my fault because I'm a little behind pace on supernova. If I planned out better the entire year, I wouldn't be having to play so many tables for at this point. So yeah. I have to schedule my play better next year so I don't have to force this much action at this point. 
not actually forcing. Uh, I'm actually pretty okay playing like 12 tables. Um, but definitely wouldn't be necessary if I planned out better. Um, so profit with rake back was about $2,500 plus the FPPs. And I made a lot of FPPs this month. Um, probably worth like $1,000 of FPPs, maybe even more. I made 14,145 VPPs this month, which is a lot, is a lot. And uh, my yearly VPPs at the end of July is 41,086. So I made more than half the entire year just this month. The entire the entire rest of the year just this month. So that that shows how much I'm grinding hard. How how hard I'm grinding, and um, yeah, doing some math here. We need a uh, hundred thousand VPPs to get Supernova by the end of December, by the end of the calendar month, calendar year. So I'm I need around sixty thousand VPPs to get there. So if I make, let's round up to fifteen thousand VPPs per month, which is pretty close to what I made this month. I'm gonna need four more months month so um sorry for my bad english <laughs> so um at the end of november i'll probably get the supernova status with a month to take it easy later um, enjoy christmas with the family and the new year december so that's the plan uh out of the 31 days of july i played on 14 of them that's also a big number. That's a very big number. And I played 125 hours total, uh, which uh, made up for a around 400 tournaments and around 42,000 hands with a BB per 100 win of 3.9, which is not that big. It should be bigger. Uh, we all know there's a lot of variance in the BB per 100. But also, I think I have. A little bit of guilt in this part because having to play too many days out of the month probably probably doesn't leave me that many time to study to actually study the game and try to analyze review my sessions and without that work behind uh, the game I'm probably losing a few BBs per hundred there I would think uh, an average of 6 BBs per 100 would be ideal for me, maybe a little bit more. Not that 4 BB per 100 is not is bad, but it should be better. It could be better. Um, of the 400 tournaments that I played, I got 70, I got in the money in 70 of them, which is around 17%. That's a pretty standard number for me. Um, actually make a little bit more in the money finishes usually but with my new strategy of like trying to go deeper in tournaments instead of just min caching um that number is going to drop of course we're going to risk more tournaments to but to bust like close to the bubble for example but the times that it actually works we're gonna have a big stack and go deeper in tournaments and I think that's working really well I'm one of the things that I'm more proud of about my game at this point is that I'm able to change gears pretty consistently and, and very effectively um, when I think I should be putting pressure I put a lot of pressure and when I think it's not the time to put pressure anymore I Take the pedal off the metal and um, play more patiently. And you can see that I'm going deeper by the number of final tables. Out of the 400 tournaments, I made 20 final tables. That's around 5% of tournaments. And it means that, like a little, a little under a, a third of the time that I cash, I'm making the final table, which is awesome, which is a, a very good number. And the two wins that I got that I already told you about, the 265 knockout and the 55 rebuy. Biggest cash is 
fourth place in the big one 62. Interesting thing about that final table is that we actually got pretty close pretty close to making a deal um four handed and I, w I was the one who actually denied it. I was the one who was asking a little bit more money because I really thought the table was weak and the only guy that I actually thought was good um, that could give me some trouble he was to my right and he had a lot of chips so I really thought that the other two short stacks would um, make mistakes ICM wise that I wouldn't so because of that edge that I thought I had and I actually still think I have I asked for more money and uh, I actually was asking for ICM um, the deal was like this let me explain it better we were four-handed there was a guy with a lot of chips who was a good player uh, me and two other guys with pretty much the same stack but I was to the left of the chip leader and I really thought I was way better than the other guys and uh, the chip leader obviously was forcing for the chip chop and he said he wouldn't take less than that so from the chip chop I was asking for I think it was $700 more to get to ICM to the ICM, ICM number and the other guys didn't want to give away that that money and the chip leader was actually trying to help me get the money because he saw that it was a fair deal but the other guys didn't take it and then like a couple of hands later after the deal negotiations um, I was in fourth place um, in a pretty standard spot um, but it, it's cool um, I mean I was offered like three thousand dollars more but I didn't think that was worth it so we went for the glory but it didn't work out this time um, it's funny actually uh, I was twitching it um, I twitch all my sessions I was twitching it and um, streaming and um, at that time people were like oh you should take the deal that's so bad um, people just don't like appreciate the variance that there is in tournament and that we're making decisions based in equity not liking results uh, and comparing to that today I just made a final table of the T-Rex on full tilt and heads up I was making a deal with a very good opponent and we actually ended up making the deal I had a little bit more chips than him and but I gave him close to chip to even chop close to an even chop because he's a good player and we were not that deep we were like 30 big lines deep so anything could happen and then today everybody asked oh you shouldn't deal you're such a <laughs> you're so bad why are you dealing this guy is raping you this guy is abusing you and pretty much the same thing we're making decisions based in equity and I think the other deal wasn't worth it and the, day, the deal today was worth it um, so yeah, uh, and to finish it up, uh, I put in my evaluation of the month. I'm giving myself um, seven out of ten um, for for a couple of reasons. First of all, I think my BB per hundred should be bigger. That's something that I need to work on. Second of all, um, second of all, what, what was I thinking? Yeah, um, on the on the weekends. I think I'm tilting a little bit sometimes and uh, because the session is just too long and when I say I'm tilting I mean that um, not like giving away my chips like going on monkey rage tilt but it, it kind of hurts my decision making sometimes and uh, it definitely takes away the fun of the of playing especially on a Sunday when there's a there's a lot of chip a lot of fishes there are a lot of fishes out there we should be like completely focused and not worrying about variance or anything so that's another thing that brings my evaluation down and also 
Um, I think I'm not studying enough. I have to make time for that. Um, outside of poker, I think I think the month of July was awesome. Um, for those that don't don't know, I take swimming lessons. Started taking them a couple of months ago, and it's really helped me a lot. Um, I'm getting better physically, and I'm sleeping better, and I'm work I'm working better. I'm not having that like not being too moody when I'm things are not going well. And I think that's definitely important. So I think that's that. Um, let me change it here just a second. Oh, not that one. Sorry. Here it is. Sorry for the mess. <laughs> um, we're doing this for the first time, so I'm sure I'm forgetting a lot of things that I should be talking about. Also, there's a lot of mess with the layout, but it's cool. I think we're in 60 minutes now. Yeah, let's wrap this up. So, uh, if you want to watch my supernova grind, um, go to twitch.tv slash perturas. There's a link right below. And find me on YouTube and Twitter, all that stuff. Um, so, uh, thanks for. Thanks for watching and feel free to ask anything and I'll, I'll answer it. I'm sure I'm forgetting a lot of things, <laughs> but this is a, a cool first experience and I hope you guys enjoy it. And uh, yeah, I see you next time for the August review. Uh, oh yeah, I forgot about something. Um, I'm gonna sep I'm gonna like separate a couple of hands that I think are worth discussing and I have a few in mind but the video is taking a little bit too long so we're gonna leave it to the next month I'm gonna do things more quickly and uh, we can discuss some strategy if you want to please let me know how you like it if you prefer getting to know more uh, hand discussion or in strategy or if you feel like just knowing about the month itself overall so yeah thanks for watching and i'll see you guys next time bye bye